Xenocaryx amidale. Scientists have named an bizarre male animal equipped with three horns atop its head after Star Wars character Queen Amidala, portrayed by Natalie Portman. Xenocaryx amidale lived 15 million years ago in Europe. The largest horn of the well-preserved fossil of Amidala's namesake resembles a hairdo worn by the character in the first episode of the science fiction series. The females of the species lacked horns and fangs, but the males had small horns above either eye, a larger T-shaped bone on the back of their heads, and enlarged canines, which were probably used for display purposes. The size of deer, X, Amidali was a herbivore living in grasslands along rivers, subsisting on a diet of leaves, fruits, and roots. Its closest relatives today are the giraffe and okapi, but Xenocaryx amidali lacked its descendants' long necks. Like cattle, sheep, goats, deer, giraffes, and okapi, the ancient animal was a ruminant. It had a stomach of four compartments and chewed cud. Puentemis mushaisiensis. Curiously, a huge 60 million year old South American turtle called Puentemis mushaisiensis had an almost perfectly round shell, which would have made it more than a mouthful for Titanoboa serogenensis, a snake that could reach 14 meters in length. Found in Colombia's La Puente Pit in the Serajon coal mine, where other notable fossils have been unearthed, the giant fossilized turtle named for the pit had a shell measuring 1.5 meters across, suggesting that turtles achieved great size once dinosaurs became extinct. They grew to huge dimensions in the absence of predators and in the presence of abundant food, a large habitat, and other factors. The turtle's shell protected it both from titanoboa and other predators as well as from cold temperatures. The shell's low dome allowed it to catch more sunlight, helping the cold-blooded turtle to stay warm. The shell was far more rounded than a typical turtle, said researcher Carlos Jaramillo of the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute in Panama. Tamisiocaris borealis, a 0.6-meter, 520-million-year-old prehistoric shrimp, had bizarre feeding filters built into its face. The Cambrian creature inhabited the waters off modern-day Greenland and ate in the manner of the modern blue whale. Its means of feeding itself was unique among similar species of the Cambrian period. The marine animal swept seawater with its pair of facial appendages to filter and trap plankton, analogous to how blue whales use their baleen to strain particles of food from seawater. A gentle predator, the shrimps sweeping the water for food, caused it to expend a lot of energy, so it had to eat a large quantity of plankton. The documentation of Tamisiocaris borealis puts to rest paleontologists' former belief that anomalocarids represented an evolutionary failure. Now, these scientists believe that, instead, they underwent an explosive evolutionary development, permitting them to become top predators. Predatory whales. New evidence provided by 3D scans of digital simulations of fossilized baleen whale teeth suggests that in the past, these whales weren't the gentle giants we know today. The mouths of modern baleen whales contain bristle-like structures to strain plankton and small fish from seawater. Their ancient forebears, however, were equipped with sharp teeth with cutting edges. According to Eric Fitzgerald, the senior curator of vertebrate paleontology at Museums Victoria, these results are the first to show that ancient baleen whales had extremely sharp teeth with one function, cutting the flesh of their prey. It had been theorized that these ancient toothy whales closed their jaws and used their teeth to strain prey from the ocean, leading to the evolution of the more familiar form of filter feeding. This is no longer believed to be the case. Pectinatella magnifica, also called the magnificent bryozoan, is a brownish-gray, slime-filled hermaphrodite with a pineapple-like texture and an odd, brain-like shape. The species was recently found in Canada's Lost Lagoon in Stanley Park, Vancouver, British Columbia. Stanley Park Ecology Society's Selena Starnes waded into the lagoon, where she plucked one of the animals from its hiding place. Starnes said the creature felt gelatinous, like jello. Besides its strange appearance, the bryozoan has several other bizarre characteristics. Each one of the seemingly single organisms is actually a colony comprised of, of hundreds of creatures, a single one of which, called a zooid, is less than a millimeter in size. P. magnifica is hermaphroditic and can also reproduce asexually if a cluster of its cells, called a stateoblast, breaks off. Before this find, P. magnifica was thought to only exist east of the Mississippi River. No one knows whether the bryozoans have always lived in the Vancouver region, going undocumented until recently, 
or whether they found their way into Canada when climate change led to warmer temperatures, allowing the creatures to spread north. Bryozoans have been around for at least 470 million years and feed on algae, which they filter from the water. They can be hazardous to the environment, upsetting the freshwater ecosystem's balance, and they tend to clog pipes. They're also known to leave a thick film of mucus behind after they're handled. Eusaurus fargus dalsasoi, an artist's conception of Eusaurus fargus dalsasoi, based on a complete fossil of the ancient creature, shows a reptile with a rounded body, a flaring tail, and rows of spikes along its back. In appearance, it resembles today's girdled lizards. It's likely the armored animal didn't swim well, if at all. Probably it was a landlubber, making its home ashore rather than in the water. The fossil was found in the Swiss Alps, which further negates the earlier view of the creature's aquatic nature. The 20-centimeter-long fossil, perhaps that of a young animal, suggests that the lizard crawled on spade-like claws, propelled by stiff-jointed legs. The animal's mode of locomotion and its coloration also indicate a terrestrial, rather than an aquatic, habitat. Chilosaurus Diego Suarezi it's difficult to imagine a vegetarian T-Rex, but one of the monstrous dinosaurs' relatives, Chilosaurus Diego Suarezi, consumed only plants. It had other bizarre attributes as well. For one thing, it has features characteristic of a number of other prehistoric creatures. The size of a horse, C. Diego Suarezi, was more plentiful than any other animal alive 145 million years ago in what's now Chile's Aizen region. Fernando Novas of the Bernardino Rivadavia Natural Sciences Museum in Buenos Aires finds the animal mystifying. I don't know how the evolution of dinosaurs produced this kind of animal, what kind of ecological pressures must have been at work, he admits. The bones of a dozen of the animals were found near General Carrera Lake in southern Chile. Four of the specimens were almost fully preserved. Once a carnivore like Tyrannosaurus rex, velociraptors, and other theropods, C. Diego Suarezi altered its diet becoming a herbivore, as evidenced by its horny beak, flat teeth, small head, and slender neck, quite unlike the heads and necks of typical of meat-eaters. Chilosaurus Diego Suarezi also had forelimbs more like an allosaur, albeit with two stumpy fingers in lieu of sharp claws. Its bizarre mixture of features indicates it to be an extreme example of mosaic convergent evolution, where different parts of an animal adapt to the environment along the same path taken by other creatures. Tocumia catalepsis, a rolled semicircular shell on the back of a strange, segmented, slug-like body with antennae and rippling rib-like tissues on its underbelly, a bevy of segmented legs enabling it to walk on the ocean's floor, and claw-like appendages at its rear make Tocumia catalepsis a bizarre-looking sea creature. Found in 2017 by a team of paleontologists from the University of Toronto and the Royal Ontario Museum, the fossil of this ancient creature helps better to explain mandibulates, animals equipped with mandibles, which include flies, ants, crayfish, and centipedes. The newly uncovered fossil was named for Tokum Creek in Marble Canyon in Kootenay National Park, British Columbia, and the Greek word for seizing. The strange sea creature, which measures over 10 centimeters, lived half a billion years ago. Although it was able to swim, scientists believe it preferred to live on the bottom of the sea. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.